Amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. God is good how often? And all the time. Amen. Certainly it is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. Anybody here? How many of y'all just can't get enough for the word of God? Amen. Just can't get enough. Like, 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 like Michael Jackson said, don't stop till you get enough. So you had to come back one more time this afternoon to get you some more. You just, just can't get enough of the word of God. David said like this. David said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and is a light unto my path. If you find yourself in some dark places in this life, the word of God will lead you through that. So we need as much of the word of God as we can get. Amen. We know these past um, few weeks we've been talking about. Um, dealing with lessons um, as it particular um, deals with different parts of our worship service. Um, we talked about how to get the most out of the assembly, coming to the worship service. Then we talked about how to get the most out of singing. Um, and then on last week, we talked about the communion and what we ought to do, how we can get the most out of the Lord's Supper. But I think I got a good one for us. We're going to go to Acts chapter um, 20, and we're going to read verses um, 7 to 11 for our lesson, for our consideration here um, on this afternoon. It's Acts chapter 20. Verses 7 to 11. Grass will the flower fade, but the word of God shall stand forever. And congratulations if you're a Tampa Bay fan. <laughs> Acts chapter 20, verses 7 to 11. And the Bible reads like this. Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, that Paul, ready to depart on the morrow, preached unto them, and he continued his message until midnight. Don't try it, preacher. There were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together. And in a window sat a certain young man by the name of Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep, and as Paul continued speaking, he fell from the third story and was taken up dead. But Paul went down, fell on him, and embracing him said, Do not trouble yourselves, for his life is in him. Now when they had come up, he had broken bread and eaten and taken a long while, even until daybreak, and then he departed. Look at somebody and say, Don't fall asleep on the preacher. <laughs> we know, I'm sure by now, that preaching is not, is probably the most important part when we consider it of our worship service. And you know most of the time you spend just about half of the service time listening to a message, listening to what it is that the preacher is saying. And we know that the standard, if you look at it, the standard for a message in the body of Christ has changed even over the last 30 years. If you go back and you look, the standard for people at a certain point, you knew when you come to a service, you was going to at least get you an hour lesson. You knew that the lesson was going to be an hour, so you didn't make no plans. You already know, hey amen. The preacher get up there at 11.30, he ain't coming down to 12.30. You already know. You already know that's how it's going to be. That's how it's going to be. I mean, I, I mean, you can't blame us because you see Paul preached till midnight. And these Christians came together. They came together to partake of the Lord's Supper. We talked about that on last week. And we can see that Paul preached to these folk literally until midnight. And put Paul, I mean, Paul Eutychus just trying his best to stay up. And Paul Eutychus, he couldn't take it no more. He just fell asleep. And even though he fell to the ground from three stories, it did not stop Paul's preaching for long. Paul stopped what he was doing. He went down and helped him. But guess what? He went right back and he continued with his lesson. <laughs> he continued to preach it the word Paul said y'all fall asleep if you want to I'm gonna continue to preach the word of God now he went down and he brought him back to life and he got a body and he continued preaching until daybreak I bet Eutychus didn't sit next to a wonder the next time he went to church now this event shows us that preaching was an important part of the first century church they could not get enough of the word of God Every opportunity that these people were afforded to come together and learn more about God, learn more about God's will, to sit at the feet of Jesus, to hear about what Jesus taught, what he said they were to do, they took advantage of that. Now you would think that most Christians would want to pay attention to the word of God being proclaimed because after all it is the bread of life and we come here to feast on the word of God and it gives us the instructions that we need to hear and the instructions that we need to apply to our lives but some view preaching as boring. Some you preaching as tiresome. Well I just come for the saying and I ain't really come for the preaching. 
The, the, the Bible says that the gospel is God's power to save. Mahalia Jackson, I don't care how good she can sing, she can't save, she ain't saying nobody into being saved. The word of God is what convicts the heart and the mind of an individual and causes them as a result of that to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, um, Romans chapter 10 and verse number 12 through 17 says like this, he says, but there is no distinction between Jew and Greek for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without the preacher? And how shall they preach unless they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report, so then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, I don't know, you might not think my feet are that pretty if you ever got to see them. I don't know, I don't know how feet, how pretty you think my feet, but Paul makes it clear that the man of God, that preachers are necessary. It is necessary for you to have the preacher. And they are to preach the word of God so that people can grow their faith by listening to God's word being proclaimed. Now, when we realize that preaching is a vital part of our worship to God and that it can, we can be either encouraged or we can be rebuked. I didn't say you would always be encouraged by the word of God. Sometimes you're not going to like to hear what the man of God is saying because sometimes he all up in your refrigerator, he all up in your closet, all up in your car, between that. He, I mean, just, just talking about things that you have going on in your personal life. So sometimes we experience rebuke, sometimes we rejoice, sometimes we are encouraged, but all of it, listen, helps you to grow as a child of God. All of it helps you to become a stronger believer in the body of Christ. Now, another thing, one of the things that's going to help you to get the most out of preaching is really the preacher himself. And as preachers, no matter who it is that you listen to, whether you're here or whether you're somewhere visiting, you have to know that the man of God is preaching what thus saith the Lord. You have to know that he is saying well, what it is that God has called for him to say. We see that in um, 2 Timothy chapter 4, um, verses 1 through 5, where Paul is writing to Timothy. He says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and at his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Here it is. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teaching. Oh, I go over there because he just say what I like to hear. Oh, I, oh, I, just, oh, I love to hear him. Pre oh, he just say, oh, it just make me feel some kind of way. Oh, it make you feel like that until they say something that you don't like. Oh, and oh man, he wasn't hitting on nothing today. I ain't really, I ain't really know what he was talking about, man. He he started out over here and he ended out. Of, he started out good, but I don't know where he was trying to land. <laughs> then Paul tells Timothy in First Timothy chapter four, verses uh, um, verses six and seven. He said, "If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ." Nourish in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed, but reject faint, um, profane and old wise fables and exercise yourself toward godliness. Now, Paul did his best, he did his downright best to train Timothy to be an effective preacher and to take his job seriously. Now, in these verses, we have seen many things that preaching is designed to do for us, and sometimes it may convince us that changes need to be made in our life sometimes sometimes you will hear the word of God and you within yourself you don't you don't tell your neighbor because you don't want them to know you what you got going on but you say within yourself man oh I got something I need to do man I need to do better you just start making a list in your mind yeah I got to get that done I got to get that I there are some things that I need to change in my life and then there are other times that you might find yourself just being so hurt that you can't say nothing for instance if you just been going around town lying on folk, talking about folk, 
running folk down. I know that ain't you, but 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 I know there's nobody in here. But if you just running all over town, running folk down, talking about people doing everything, and then the preacher gets up and they start talking about how that stuff is an abomination to the Lord, you're gonna take that as a rebuke, man. man, man, man oh, I, I'm. Look, you, you just sitting there, Lord, your, your face just twisted up. Oh, you just, just can't say anything. Like, you know, I just want to say, ouch. And, you know, I'm hurt. It's hitting me. You know, it affects you in different ways. And other times, the preaching can encourage us and it can build our faith. Now, for example, when we hear about the faithful men and women of the Bible, people such as Paul, and especially Jesus, our greatest example, for when we hear about these faithful men and how God was always there for them, it gives us encouragement. Because we have great examples that if God was with them, we know God could be with us. The Bible says we are surpassed about with so great, since we are surpassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily ensnare us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So I would suggest that if you want to get the most out of preaching, then you must be willing to listen to what is being said. That's number one. That's number one. If you expect to get the most out of preaching, don't you, you should never be able to leave a service saying you didn't get nothing. Because if the word of God is being preached, you can't help but to get something out of it. Well, I didn't get anything. I didn't feel fed. Did you open your mouth? <laughs> a closed mouth can't get fed. <laughs> Did you, did you bring anything? And you must be listening to what is being said. Now, when, when, when Jesus went around preaching this new message, this was something that people had never heard before. And he went around preaching this new message. He ran across good listeners. And he ran across not so good listeners. His disciples wanted to know why he was speaking to people in parables. Why you talk to folk like that? This is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 13, verses 13 through 16. He said, therefore, I speak to them in, par in parables because seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes have closed, lest they should see with their own eyes and hear with their own ears, lest they should understand with their hearts in turn, so that I shall heal them but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear now there were many people in Jesus day that followed Jesus around just to see the miracles there were many people that followed Jesus around because they know at any given moment it can be an all-you-can-eat fish buffet. I mean, at any given moment it can be all-you-can-drink wine. I mean, you show up at the right wedding. I mean, you have all you can drink. That a lot of people were following Jesus around just for for the glitz and the glamour, just for the miracles, just for the things that he was doing. They were not interested in what he was saying. There was a lot of people could have cared less that your kingdom was at hand. What, what a pickle, what a salmon, what a crab, what a brim. What, what, what do you got for us? And sometimes Christians are like that because they are not like Job who counted on the word of God more necessary than his own food. Yeah. Not like Job. Job. Job said, you know what? The word of God is more precious than my own food. Now, the people are more interested in their social aspect of the worship service or certain parts as singing. A uh, 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 certain parts of, of partaking of the Lord's Supper. Now, when we are not interested in hearing the word of God, then we're certainly not going to get anything out of it. If you're not interested in the word, how are you going to get something out of it? It's not possible. Because you already, you come with the wrong attitude. I know all I need to know. I've been to church 30 years. What it is you're going to preach that I ain't never heard. What it is you're going to teach that, I, that, that something that somebody is not already. Let me say, I don't care if somebody come to you every day and tell you Genesis 1 and 1. Every time, every time they come and tell you, you ought to be fresh. Every time they come and tell you, it ought to be new. I don't care how many times you can revisit the same text, the same scripture, when every time you come, it ought to bless your life. Every time, I know some of y'all in here, y'all like me, y'all got your go-to scriptures that when you're going through certain things in your life, you just go to, man, I'm going to go to this word of God right here. You got it in the back of your mind. 
mad because you already know, man, when I'm dealing with adversity, when I'm dealing with circumstances in my life, I need a word from the Lord to encourage me. Ezekiel chapter 33, um, verses 30 um, through 32 says this. He says, as for you, son of man, the children of your people are talking about you beside the walls and in the doors of the houses. And they speak to one another, everyone saying to his brother, please come and hear what the word is that comes from the Lord. So they come to you as people do. They sit before you as my people and they hear your words, but they do not do them. Let me read that again. Verse 31. So they come to you as people do. They sit before you as my people and they hear my words, but they do not do them. For with their mouth, they show much love. But their hearts pursue their own gain. Indeed, you are to them as a very lovely song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear your words, but they do not do them. This kind of listening won't do us any good if we don't take the message to heart. If we're not hearing what it is that is being said to us, James says it like this in James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. He says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word, this one is blessed in what he does. Man, if you do what the word says, you'll be blessed. If you do what the word of God said, he said that, and, and if you are not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Now, those who only listen to the preacher because they love the way he preaches, but they do not actively do the things that they are hearing, are deceiving themselves. Come on. I said those that just listen because they like what they're hearing, but they don't really take it to heart or put it to practice, you are deceiving yourself because we must listen and after you listen, you got to follow your listening with some action, with some doing. It has to be applied. You have to make it ap applicable to your own life. Now, when you can really learn and listen and make the message apply to your lives, You'll get the most out of preaching. Man, you'll be one of those people. Man, is it Sunday yet? It ain't number two. It's, man, is it Sunday yet? It's Wednesday, man. And you, you'll be a person. You'll go back and you'll revisit lessons. You'll take out in your own time. You'll be studying the word because you just cannot get enough of the word of God. You ought to have an appetite for God's word. Now, to help some people become great listeners, I want to offer some suggestions that might help you, just a few tips that might help you out when you're listening to the preacher. Now, number one, you need to make listening a part of your worship to God. I said, not, you, you need to make talking a part of your worship to God. We need to make listening a part of our worship to God. Now, in, in our previous lessons, we talked about the importance of listening to the words that we sing and listening to the prayers as they are being led. And it is just as important that we train ourselves to listen to the message, to listen to the sermon that is being presented. And we know how important God's word is, so it should not be hard for us to convince ourselves that we need to pay attention. And then... We need to make an effort to determine what the sermon is about. Do you, you, will not, you will not be able to guess the amount of people that come to church Sunday after Sunday and the word just, 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 fly, just fly right. They, they, they don't get what the message is saying. Now, what is the subject? What are the points? That's, well, that's why it's important that you take notes. That is why it's important that you write down, you jot down things that are being said so that you can go back and you can revisit what the word of God is saying. Now, every child of God should examine each lesson that you hear preached. Every child of God ought to examine every lesson that you hear preached because somebody can be telling you anything. 
I said somebody can be pulling your leg this way and can be pulling your leg that way. That is why it's important that you revisit the word of God. You need to go back and fact check. Make sure they're telling you what's right. It, it may, even when it come to me. I don't care who it is. You go back and you check and you make sure. And if you see what ain't right, preacher, this don't add up. <laughs> Come in the spirit of love. But, you know, hey, what you, what you said, you know, hey, I ain't trying to talk about you or nothing, but I couldn't find that. Give me some clarification. Show me what you're trying, what point were you trying to make? Clarify. You need to make sure, man, if your soul is going to be fed, you want to make sure that you're eating what you need to eat. Amen. Acts chapter 17, verses 10 and 11, it said, Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. And when they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica. Or these were more, another version says, noble than those in Thessalonica because they searched the scriptures on Sunday. On Wednesday. It said that they searched the scriptures daily. Whether or not these things were so. So that let me know that whenever they had the opportunity to come together in a corporate worship assembly, they were taking note of what, what was being said. They, they were listening to what was being said. And, you know, it, and a lot of people back in that day, you know, some maybe didn't have um, the privilege of learning how to read or understanding the original text. They had to find somebody, man, you need to explain this to me. I want to understand what is going on. And that is how we ought to be as people of God. Whenever we get to a place we don't want to. I understand something we ought to be trying to ask questions we ought to be trying to figure it out never be ashamed to say I don't know never be ashamed to say I don't understand because what you don't understand somebody else may not understand it and they're not going to say nothing so by you saying something you're not only benefiting yourself but you're benefiting somebody else as well now it would also help us to pay attention by focusing ourselves Get rid of our distractions. We can check Facebook after service. We can check Twitter after service. Um, whatever they texting you about, it ain't that important. You, you check, you say, they know you at church. They know you at, they know you at church. We ought to pay attention to what is going on. And when the preacher reads from the Bible, read along with him. If the preacher is preaching out of the word of God, you read along with him. And one of the things that I love about that is that as we see, people are able to see what the word is being said. They are able to grasp the word of God for them. And not, you know, because you have a lot of people that, you know, well, uh, you know, I, I, yeah, I heard the preacher say it. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I heard, you know, such and such said, have you read it for yourself? Have you searched the scriptures and have you found those things to be so? You got to study for yourself. Yeah, you know what well, Bishop said, Rem said, Pastor said. No, what, what does God say? Do you know what the Word of God has said? Because when you stand before the judgment bar of Christ, you're not going to be able to call nobody to give you no no kind of oh come come talk to God for me. You know what? You know I, I really don't know what His Word said, but you, my preacher, you know it ain't going to happen like that. We must all stand before the judgment bar of Christ and give an account of the things that we have done in his body. Those things good and those things bad. It's going to be between you and God. So you need to get to know the Lord for yourself. So now when you listen to somebody preach, you don't need to focus on mispronounced words. At all. You don't need to focus on how they dress. At all. Or try to take aim to find something that you can disagree with. Instead, your main focus should be listening on how is what is being said can make me be better as a Christian. Amen. How is what is being said can help me be better as a child of God. Amen. And I don't care how long you've been a Christian or how faithful you are, you can always find something that the preacher says from the word of God that's going to encourage you, something that's going to rebuke you, something that's going to challenge you to make you do better. And when you can make that your focus, we'll be able to benefit from every message that we hear. Amen. And you need to listen with a mind to take action on what you hear. Amen. So you're not just going to be a hearer of the word, 
but you're going to be a doer as well. It's not just going through one ear and coming out the other. It's not just something I just come and I experience it all and I just leave it at the church. No, I'm taking this word with me because the devil is not just meeting me at church. He's meeting me at the house. He's meeting me on my job. He's meeting me in all of my relationships and things that I'm dealing with. So I got to take the word of God with me everywhere that I go. I never know when I'm going to be faced with a circumstance. I never know when I'm going to have to go out into my wilderness and be faced with, the, with temptation by the devil. So I'm going to need the word of God if I expect to be able to come back to him during those times. So that is why it is important. It is of the utmost importance that you pay attention to what is being preached. Not only what is being preached, when you're in Bible class, listen to what the teacher is saying. Make sure you're taking notes. And look, make sure you participate. It don't do no harm to ask questions. It don't do no harm to say, you know, can you explain that in a little bit more detail? Because not only does it benefit you, but it benefits everybody. So preaching is not just a formality. It's of the utmost importance. Because this, believe it or not, is where 95% of the church get all of their spiritual food. Come on now. Because there's not a large amount of people that really have in their private time a study life. Come on now. A lot of people in, in their private time they, they don't really visit the word, you know, to, to try to see what God's will is for their life, how they can be better. A lot of people are solely dependent on what a teacher or a preacher is going to tell them, and that's what they're going to grow off of. But we got to be like these first century Christians, where it says that they didn't just wait until they had an opportunity to come together for the corporate worship service. But it says that these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, for they searched daily. Every opportunity that they had, they were searching, they were studying, trying to see what God's will was for their life. That is how we're going to grow, by the word. This is how we grow our faith. This is how we become strong as children of God, by learning more about God's word. We got to be like David. David said something, he said, I love it. He said, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin. How you going to hide what you ain't got? How am I hide what I don't know about? He said, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. We ought to be students of the word of God. And not just wait on somebody else to tell us, but we ought to be studying for ourselves. And when we study for ourselves, we'll have questions. And then when we come into the corporate worship, so we can ask somebody so that we'll be able to grow as people of God so that our knowledge will be able to grow. And again, not only will it benefit us, but it will benefit those around us because we understand this. We're trying to get to heaven together, right? You do want to see me in heaven, right? I hope. I hope. Because I, I want to see you. I want to see you. We ain't got to be on the same street, but I still want to see you up there. And the only way you're going to get there, you got to know something about this word. You got to have a relationship with God. And I'm not just talking about a Sunday and Wednesday relationship, but I'm talking about in your personal private time, you ought to be setting aside some time. If it ain't number five or ten minutes out of your day, I ain't telling you you got to spend a whole hour, even though we spend more than that on Facebook, uh, watching TV, you know. We uh, sit there and sit, sit on the phone for three, four hours. Gossiping, you know, done, you know but five or ten minutes. In a day, phone, put that away, TV, turn it off, all distractions gone. I just need some time where I can visit the Word of God, where I can study all the Word. And while I'm studying, I'm taking notes because in my other spare time, I'm going to go back and revisit these things. And what is that helping me to do? It's helping me to build my faith, and it's helping me to become stronger as a Christian, and it's helping me to become more wiser in the word of God. So I'll be like when the Bible says, think not in that hour a reason of the hope that is within you or what you're going to say of a response to give you a reason of the hope that is within you because the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance those things that you ought to say. He can't bring back what you haven't learned. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. He cannot bring to your remembrance what you have not, first of all, taken time to study. Right. So we have to be in the word of God and let me tell you, in those weak moments in our life when we find ourselves seemingly without strength,
the word of God will be able to give you that strength that you need to sustain and make it through what you're going through. So children of God, if you maybe you're here on tonight um, or maybe you're watching us via live stream and you're not a Christian, um, you don't yet know the Lord as your savior, you have not been baptized, you're not a member of the church of Christ, I would have you to know that God is still in the soul saving business. Um, he has not set, start, stopped saving souls. He has not ceased to be who he is. The same God that he was then, he's still that same God today. And the same way, the same men that men were saved then in this first century church is the same way that men and women alike are saved today. You come by hearing his word, believing the same, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ as your savior, being buried with him in baptism, have your sins washed away, eradicated, done away with, never to rise before you in this life, neither the life that is to come. And the Lord himself will add you to his body. Maybe you're here on tonight or you're watching us and you're standing in the need of prayer. I believe that's all of us at this moment. We can all use some prayer. The Bible says that the prayers of the righteous, they still, they avail as much. So maybe you're here, you're watching, you're subject to the invitation. Don't put off today for what you plan on doing tomorrow. Why not answer the invitation now as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. The word do not let the word depart.